It's been a few days since the Sukhanen spiritual successor Aiden Chronicle 100 Heroes was announced and since then there's been quite a lot of information released about the many different aspects of the game as well as its future goals. This is Hellfire RPGs, your source of Aiden Chronicle info. This video is going to look at everything we know so far including the development, the story and characters, the combat and other game mechanics such as the large scale wars and cooking. This information has been compiled from a range of sources including English and Japanese interviews, the Kickstarter campaign and the great Muriyama's Twitter. Now I know that this isn't Sukhan 6 but everything I've seen so far is exactly what I would want from a spiritual successor and I could not be more excited. Before we get into the core mechanics I want to talk a bit about the development of the game. Aiden Chronicle is being developed by the new Rabbit and Bear Studios which is made up of some experienced developers. Some of the staff members involved have met up during different events over the years and naturally there were conversations of the glory days and their regrets during these times. One topic that commonly came up was, isn't it about time we created a game for ourselves, something we really want to make for the fans? And that's what it took to spark Rabbit and Bear Studios and Aiden Chronicles. Now there are some huge names from the past Sukunen games behind this project, including the great Yoshitaka Muriyama, who was the creator of Sukunen. He'll be in charge of writing the story and it's an understatement to say that this game is in good hands. Then we have Junko Kawano, who was the character designer from Sukunen 1 and the writer, producer and designer for Sukunen 4. There's also Asamu Kamuda who worked on Sukunen Tactics and Tyricus. He will be in charge of the system design and direction for this game. Another key staff member is Junishi Murakami who worked on Castlevania Aria of Sorrow and will be doing the art direction and production. Then there are two well known experienced composers on board. First is Matoi Sakuraba who worked on the Tail series and then there's Mishiko Naruke from the Wild Arms series. I apologise if I'm mispronouncing these names. It was also stated that there will be new announcements made for any new veterans that come on board. When I heard this I immediately got my hopes up for Miki Higashino. If she joined the crew then it really would be the dream team. One question that I commonly see asked is when will it be released and for which platforms? At this point the estimated time is fall 2022. It was originally going to be just on PC but the Kickstarter project has just reached the growth goal for console releases. These intended consoles include PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and the new generation Nintendo system. Now one thing that makes Sukunen so amazing is the lore and world building through multiple titles. If the crowdfunding goes well and the project is heavily supported then there is a very good chance that the developers will continue making games for the series. This is why it is so important to show your support right now on Kickstarter. And finally as far as localization goes at a bare minimum the staff plan to have English and Japanese voices in the game. One of the stretch goals was also to have Chinese translation so we can only assume more countries will receive a localization with more funding. With Muriyama at the helm I have no doubt that Aiden Chronicle will be an epic tale. Here's what we know so far. The story will focus on two characters, Sane a young and gifted imperial officer and Noah a boy from a remote village. These two characters become friends despite being on two different sides of a conflict between the League of Nations and the Goldian Empire who wish to expand their reach through rune lenses. While these two characters have good intentions and a strong friendship, the way they go about achieving their goals are different and as you progress through the story you'll see what becomes of these characters and the choices that they're forced to make. Two friends, different sides of the war, sound familiar? This has Rue and Joy written all over it and I could not be more excited to see where this leads. Silent protagonists were a huge staple of the Sukunen series so is the main character Noah going to follow suit? Muriyama stated that Noah is a character that the player can imprint themselves on. However in keeping with modern gameplay he won't be fully silent. Maybe this means that there'll just be a lot of dialogue options for him, who knows? And what about the rune lenses? These are the core magic power in the game and the strength of each rune lens greatly differs. Some are created through magic, others are manufactured and their existence and how they're used ends up being a key point to the story. Obviously these rune lenses sound very similar to the true runes of Sukhiren, super powerful and the cause of many wars. Honestly the more I hear about the story and the world the more excited I'm becoming. I know it's only just been announced but I want more. Now it's time to dive into some of the mechanics. We'll start with the 100 characters that can be recruited. It should be noted that more characters will be added to this already massive list as stretch goals. For instance after raising 2.1 million the Beastman mercenary Eupharius 7 was added. There have only been images and bios for 7 characters so far but Muriyama did state that they really want a variety in characters and for players to find a character that is their favourite and that speaks to them. He also added that there will be a few really wacky characters that stand 
understand that as well. With over a hundred characters, it would be easy for some to simply fade into the background. That is why there will be a huge focus on character use outside of the main party. Your other recruited characters can form other parties and be sent on other tasks and missions. One example given was that you may see them improving the fortress or fighting on the overworld with other parties. This sounds incredible. Personally, I really want to see missions where you need to form multiple parties of six, such as that epic Luca Blight battle. The screenshots that we've seen so far only show speech bubbles, but the goal is for them to have portraits when speaking. I think that this is very important to convey emotion, especially due to the sprite graphical style. Now, I know what you're all thinking, will cooking make a return? I have good news, one of the Kickstarter stretch goals related to this. The goal was when funding reached 1.25 million US dollars, a cooking minigame would be added. It took just over 10 hours to reach this point, which was amazing. A fishing minigame and spinning top battle was also recently added as a stretch goal and I can only hope there will be more to come. It sounds like the developers truly are listening to the fans. Next is the guild and fortress building system that has been spoken about quite a bit. The idea is to have many customization options and ornaments that allow the player to really personalize the fortress. I'll list a few options that are on the Kickstarter page. Building sturdy castle walls to protect from enemy invasions. Expanding military equipment to both develop new weapons and recruit more troops. Cultivating fields for farming and also creating granaries. Creating specialty products to trade in order to develop businesses such as the blacksmith, builder, souvenir shop and restaurants. The guild system is all about designating characters to improve the fortress town as well as go on missions. These missions include things like forming a party with high strength and carrying capacity and sending them out to gather specific resources. Another example was sending out a party of scouts to hopefully locate some rare materials. This new level of customization takes what we experienced in Suhuden to a new level and honestly it's music to my ears. Rabbit and Bear have done everything right so far. If you're a fan of Sukhren, there's probably still one core mechanic that you're wondering about, the large scale wars. Rabbit and Bear stated that since the story is about war, we will definitely have large scale battles. Some of the people on the team want to include armies laying siege to your fortress town. That is exactly what I wanted to hear and I can't wait to learn more. One on one battles was also a huge part of Sukhren. Not much is known about this, but the developers did hint at a one on one battle system in the Japanese IGN interview, so we can only wait to hear more. Now let's jump into the combat. So far we know that it will be a turn based system with a party of 6. The goal is to speed up the overall pace of battles while adding in dynamic camera work to make the combat pop. Muriyama stated that the backgrounds won't just be 2D backdrops, they will be dynamic. There are lots of positions characters can start in and based on that the different character skills will have merits and demerits. Here are some examples that have been given so far. If you're battling in a forest and have a ninja character they'll have the special ability to hide behind trees. Casting and earthquake magic can also change the topography of battle conditions greatly. Finally, an archer type character can use high positions to their advantage. This formation system sounds amazing and I'll say it again, it sounds like they're taking everything we loved about Sukhoden and putting it into overdrive. It also mentioned on the Kickstarter page that over time your heroes will learn special AI abilities that they'll perform on their own in battle. More of these AI commands will be learnt as the characters grow stronger and this sounds like a very interesting way to make combat more unique. Now it's time to talk about the Kickstarter campaign that dropped a few days ago. The developers decided to take this path in order to give them full freedom and control over the game that they want to make. If the game was controlled by a publisher then this just wouldn't be possible. Aiden Chronicle 100 Heroes is for the fans and this goal has been reinforced big time through the campaign and the days leading up to it. Who are these fans? That's me. That's you. Fans of Sukhoden and so far everything I've seen has exceeded my expectations of what a Sukhoden like game should be. Muriyama stated that in order for us to make Ayurin Chronicles the game it needs to be, a game for the fans, we need those same fans to lend us their strength. He's talking to us guys, for this game to be what we want it to be, the true successor to the Sukhoden series, it's up to us to show our support, not after the game is released but now. It's going to take more than 100 heroes to get this game to the standard that we all want, so if you're financially in a situation that allows for it then I encourage you to show your support and back the Kickstarter campaign. What are your thoughts on Aiden Chronicles so far? Have you backed the project yet? Let me know in the comments. This was Hellfire RPGs, thanks for watching. If you liked this video hit like and sub for loads more Aiden Chronicle and RPG content and come say hi on the socials. See you next time.